Hello and welcome to the video. This is a follow-up video answering the questions that I got on my first look video of this thing here. Now this is the TBS Tango 2. This is the much smaller new version of the original Tango 1 and if you're not interested in Crossfire at all then you might as well leave the video here because this is a Crossfire only radio. But if you are a Crossfire addict, you love the system and you also are looking for a radio that's super portable that will pretty much fit in a Fat Shark goggles case, then this is the radio that you might have been waiting for. Now again, it's running on Freedom TX, which is an open TX version, and I've had it for a couple of months here. So uh, I need to say a big thank you to Trappy and the team at Team Black Sheep uh, for technically vetting that the answers that I'm about to give are accurate, and I'm not talking out of my backside. Now, before we get too far into this, I think it's worthwhile me talking a little bit more about the ergonomics because I think lots of people looked at this by the side of something like a PlayStation controller and immediately discounted it. If you are discounting it because of its size alone and you've been looking for a small crossfire radio, then don't. The way that it's actually made, um, ergonomically, it is incredibly comfy in the hands and it also has straight sides. Now if you compare it to something like the X-Lite where the sides kind of slope in, it does feel very much like a PS4 or an Xbox controller. Whereas with this radio, the way it works is as you put your hands on the side, because the sides are pretty vertical, uh, there's only one real giveaway and that's that there is an indent that your little finger and your ring finger kind of fold around. But apart from that, it feels like a much bigger radio because everything else that you are touching with your hands feels like a bigger radio than it actually is. And again, because it's full-size gimbals, and you can see that by comparing it with something like the X-Lite, the feel when you're not looking at the radio, you can forget that it is a small form factor because these are full-size gimbals in this thing and that makes a tremendous difference to how it actually feels. But let me crack through some of the actual questions that I got asked, because some of these were fantastic. And thank you again to everybody that asked these really great questions. First of all is, how do you update it? Well, the good news is, is that it's exactly the same as all the other TBS products at the moment. You just plug it in to the agent using the USB port at the bottom. Now, once it's plugged into the computer, uh, one of the options that it will come up with is TBS agent. Just use your roll uh, wheel to select that and then go into your TBS agent. It'll appear and you can go and update it as you would any other product. Do make sure you're running the latest and greatest version of the agent though. I'll put a link in the description so you can download and update it. Uh, I had to do that. My older version of the agent, uh, although it told me there was a later version, wasn't updating. So I went onto the website downloaded the later version and installed that and it installed over the top and worked great. Second great question is how do the trims work for a wing? Now if you are running a wing with a flight controller then you don't touch the trims at all. Uh, see my series on building things like the uh, Brain Dart and the TBS Kaipaina 2 and lots of others. If you put a flight controller in, you want all the middle channel positions to be 1500 on the radio. And then you use either auto trim or trim functions on the flight controller itself, either in iNav or something like Arduplane, to do all of that goodness for you. However, if you are flying a more traditional plane and you do want to trim it, there are two options. The first is using good old auto trim. That's a really cool feature in OpenTX or the Freedom TX version variant that's on here. It still works here and you can set it up to a push button. Now I set it up to the push button that's behind the throttle and what you can do is you kind of hold the control to what, wherever it needs to be for straight and level flight and then click that button once and that then sets the trims for you. That's a powerful thing in OpenTX that all radios have. If however you want to tweak the individual trims then double pressing this control will take you through each of the controls in turn and allow you to tweak them. Now that's probably not really great if you're in the middle of a flight. Uh, so I would always set up the instant trim function in Elton TX and use that to tweak stuff after the fact. But again, I would watch the setup videos for things like the TBS campaign in a uh, that I did and also things like the brain dart because those are things that you need to set up all the middle channel positions at 1500 and then you never touch them again. 
Next question was one about range. Uh, this has um, a crossfire module in it. Maximum power is 250 milliwatts. Now that's not legal in all countries, so make sure that you're limiting the maximum power to what's legal where you are. But the question is, is how far can I get on 250 milliwatts? Now, talking to people at TBS, um, they've got tens of kilometers. Um, but I would probably say for 250 milliwatts, so long as you've got your antenna alignment sorted out and you've got good placement of the receiver in the model, then I would probably get pretty much guarantee you're going to get four or five uh, miles. Now, range does vary. It depends on the local conditions, how much radio interference uh, there is, the noise floor, and also how well the antennas are actually aligned, loads of other things. But I would say for 250 milliwatts, get, guess four or five miles. Uh, again, be careful with that. Flying beyond line of sight in lots of places is illegal. So check the local regulations and laws before you try something like that. Next one was about, is there an LBT version? Uh, LBT stands for listen before talk. It's something that was introduced in the EU a while ago. Uh, if you are running free sky radios, then you have like a, an EU LBT version of the firmware and a non uh, LBT version of the firmware or sometimes called international. Now uh, that doesn't affect this kind of technology. Uh, Crossfire has been compliant with EU regulations for forever so it's exactly the same with this radio as with the Crossfire. You don't kind of have to worry about that stuff. Next question is a really good one. How do you change mode? Now I fly mode 2 um, and there are ways on the radio that you can change this and it's pretty easy and straightforward. Now at the time of recording this video the manual is still not out but let me document it and show you how it works uh, so that if you do get this radio and you fly mode 1 or even mode 3 you can change everything around. First thing you have to do is to remove the rubber grips at the back. Now you'll need something sharp to get underneath them and then gently use your fingertips to undo all the tabs. Once those tabs have been removed, then on the back of the radio there are six screws. Uh, I used, I think it was a one and a half millimeter hex driver. There's two at the bottom by the side of where the USB and audio out are. And then there are two on each side, making six in total in these little recesses remove them. Also nice to see a little bit of blue on there as well for thread lock. And once they're free, the back of the radio will just come undone and just slide off. The first thing you can see is the battery. Uh, disconnect that and pull it free. Uh, there is a little kind of holding pad in the middle and you are into the radio. Now here there are a couple of screws in the top right hand corner and the middle left hand corner that are clearly marked that you can use to choose whether or not the vertical movement of the stick is sprung loaded or not sprung loaded. So by either screwing those in or undoing those screws you can change the throttle from one side to the other. Now if you're moving the throttle from one side to the other, the other thing you're going to have to do is move this spring bar which has the detents for either a notched throttle or a smooth throttle so you can set that up. And now what you'd have to do is undo the screws on there and move it to the other side and then set the tension on there for how you want it. Putting the radio back together is the reverse. Uh, don't forget, and I'll show you in a second, that because you've unplugged the battery, there's no battery backup in here. You're going to have to reset your date and time. But once it's all back together, then go into OpenTX, go into the main radio menu, scroll down to the bottom, and there you can set which mode you want. I'm using mode 2, but you can have it as 1, 2, 3, or 4. One last thing to comment on. While I've got the back off, I can show you something smart as well. Inside the kit is this SMA antenna set. Now, by default, it has the standard antenna that comes with it all set up, and underneath this little strain relief rubber bit, there is the SMA-style connector that actually connects the inbuilt antenna onto the board. Now, if you pop the board off, you can take that off and replace it with the SMA antenna set that also has a 3D printed part, and that will allow you to install uh, one of the other Crossfire antennas that are available. Next question then is, what do you need to do to get it flying out the box? The answer is nothing, really. It's kind of set. Um, it's calibrated. It's ready to go out the box. The system is configured. Just need to make sure that you're not using more power than you should in the area that you are. So all you have to do is take it out the box, 
give it a good charge, make sure it's fully charged for the first time out, and then go through the normal process. Uh, when you go into the menu, the first menu item that you get on the Tango 2 is the Crossfire Lua script. So you go into there and just use it like you would the Crossfire Lua script on any other radio. You can set the power, set it into bind, bind to your models, and do all that goodness too. Now at the moment, there isn't a connection up to the OpenTX companion, um, but I've heard a rumor that hopefully that's on its way. Uh, that would be great, and then we could potentially copy uh, models from other radios, because I use things like this thing, uh, which is what I use for all my crossfire flying uh, at the moment when I'm not using the Tango. I've got lots of models on here and it would be easier for me to kind of copy them across onto this using something like Companion. So let's hope that comes soon. And while we're on the subject of operating systems, I had a question about the fact that lots of people don't like OpenTX and I absolutely get that. OpenTX is a fantastically powerful system but is blooming complicated. And if the question was, will it come with the very simplistic system that the original Tango did, checking with TBS, the answer is no. So if you uh, aren't prepared to get your head around OpenTX, you might struggle a little bit. However, what I would recommend would be go and check out my OpenTX Mix School. It starts from the very simple basics and work your way up. And if you work your way through that, after the first eight or nine videos, you'll know your way around the OpenTX system enough to be dangerous. Next question is about logging telemetry. Uh, this is, although it's Freedom TX, it's a fork of OpenTX, this is really OpenTX. Um, there is an SD card in here. Now, you probably noticed as I took the back off, there is an SD card hidden away. Now, uh, that has all the files on there that you're going to need to run the radio, and it is also, um, it's not accessible externally from the radio, so you can't remove it, but if you're gonna use lots of telemetry and those kind of things, uh, maybe worthwhile considering maybe upgrading that SD card, uh, but things like telemetry and all the other features of OpenTX are available in Freedom TX, there's just been a couple of tweaks on here to, in, to decrease the latency between the sticks and the Crossfire system, and a couple of tweaks so that the first menu item is things like the Crossfire Lua script. Last question is kind of coming back to where I started. Does it support other protocols apart from Crossfire? Uh, no, it hasn't got a bay. That's not really what it's designed for. If you're looking for a multi-protocol radio, then at the moment, something like the Jumper T16 or the new T16 variant that Hobby Porter will be bringing out soon are probably uh, the best bets if you want to use something like the standard Crossfire module with another radio. But if you're looking for a Crossfire radio system that uh, you don't care about those other protocols, will fit in a backpack, which is what I'm excited about this for with my brain dart. It means that I'm gonna be super portable and be able to go up sides of mountains and things without any messing about and with minimum amount of weight on my back, then this is one that you should be looking at. So hopefully that helps those of you that had that question. Again, thanks for all of you that left questions on the video. Uh, if you have any more, pop them down below and uh, if I get enough, I can do another video. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.